Hello everybody, this is Roby with Free Tours by Foot. Welcome, I missed y'all. Um, we're in my backyard right now and today I'm gonna have a day with voodoo with all of you. This was actually per request from a bunch of you guys sending me messages through Instagram and also on Facebook. So today I'm gonna be teaching you a little bit more history on actual plantation voodoo and also teach y'all how to do some actual plantation voodoo root work which a lot of you know as hoodoo, which is a Southern tradition. So we're in my backyard where a lot of the herbs they're gonna be using today are actually growing. I'm gonna also go into my front yard and pick some herbs. And I'm, to, I'm actually gonna teach you how to make an actual medicine bottle, which is traditionally used in plantation voodoo for illness. And also most importantly, teach you how to make your own plantation voodoo gri gri bag, which is a magical talisman that you wear to bring whatever you want to happen to you, happen to you, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the front and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Stay with me. Uh, I got a lot of questions from everybody um, on Facebook and on Instagram. Like, what does a day of voodoo look like? And what do we usually do during the daytime? What are our favorite pastimes? Do, are we always involved with the traditions? Do we take a step back? Believe it or not, our lives are actually quite simple. We don't really do a lot of voodoo, as you would say, constantly. Most times we usually come to the altar whenever we need something or we're actually trying to achieve something. Um, I spend a lot of my time playing video games. I spend a lot of time playing video games. I spend a lot of time playing video games, especially Animal Crossing, New Horizons, waiting on my update, Nintendo. Um, but whenever I do wake up in the morning, I also come to my ancestor altar. My ancestor altar is right now in the altar room, also known as the Jevo. This is where initiation rites take place. This is also where I do my spiritual work, where I do my prayers every single day. Yes, I do pray every day. I do not pray at night. I pray in the morning. And you are a living embodiment of your ancestors. So I always pray to my ancestors and God first. So I go to God first and then I always go to my ancestors. Most times I'll pour them some coffee or I usually give them their favorite drinks. Um, I'm actually pouring a sugar beer that I actually acquired from home, we'll say, uh, to my ancestors. This is traditionally made on plantations out of sugarcane juice. And I also normally light a white candle for them every morning. And most times I just sit here and I'll have some coffee with them. I'll pour my coffee, I'll pour them some coffee and I'll sit and I'll tell them about my problems tell them what's bothering me during the uh, during the week. You know, I tell them everything. And most Bodoazan will do this because we believe you cannot reach the elevated spirits, the Lawa and the Orisha, without going through your ancestors first. You've all heard me say that before. It's very important because you are a living embodiment of your ancestors. You would not be here if it was not from them. So I always sit with them and I always try to leave their favorite foods. I have a lot of things on my altar that some things that people have given me that I know my ancestors would like. For instance, this hat my grandmother loves that James gave me because he forgot my birthday one time. So he went to a thrift store and bought me a blue hat because I'm obsessed with the color blue. Yes, I just put him out there. Um, but I love the hat though, so I can't really complain. <laughs> so one day, I, my grandmother used to wear a lot of hats like this. So I gave it to her as an offering. Um, and we believe that we can talk to them. We believe that we can actually communicate with them. And that they love when we leave their favorite foods and drinks when, uh, that they used to have whenever they were alive. Then I start my day. And that normally means I'm going to go uh, get ready to do a tour with you guys. Or I'm going to end up going fishing or playing the video game or whatever it may be. But most times our days in Vodou start off with our ancestors. My partner, this is a religious thing for him. He does this before he does anything. And if he doesn't serve them in the daytime, he serves them at night. Me personally, I just serve them during the day. As you can see, a lot of modern things are on the altar. And then we start doing the religious work. So that's when you start your medicine bottle. That's when you start your gri gri. That's when you start, you know, uh, preparing for ceremony, whatever you have to do that day. But you always commune with your ancestors first. So uh, that is how we start our day. And now that I've communed, we're going to go make our gri gri and our medicine bottle. Let's go. So recently, as y'all know, we just experienced Hurricane Ida. And so me and my partner, we drove back to where I come from in Bayou Sarah, Louisiana, to visit my sister. 
not realizing it was the end of the summer harvest for our traditions of Vodou back then. So I went home to a, a horde of many different fruits and vegetables that you pick around this time of year, August and September. What I have here in front of me is actually wild Louisiana garlic chives. I actually picked these from the Baptist church that I, I grew up actually attending growing up. And this is, for those of you from the South, whenever you were kids, you used to go outside and then you would play all hours of the day. And when you hear them crickets chirping, you go back inside and your mama tell you, go take a bath, you smell like outside. This is what's actually smelling like outside. Very pungent, very strong. And plantation Vodou root work, we actually use this to remove work, which means to remove anything negative on you. If you feel like you're having a bad day because of some magical reason, or if you feel like you just have a lot of bad luck, we actually pick this and we use it to uh, rub on the skin to remove anything negative on you. It smells like pure garlic. So we use a tiny amount of this. This is also used in the medicine bottles that we actually create to cure the common cold and also the flu. Quick disclaimer though, if you ever get sick, don't watch this video and think that this is a cure-all. Please go to your doctor. I'm teaching you traditionally what people back then during the plantation days would use to help uh, with illnesses and whatnot. This is one of my favorite things because it grows everywhere. A lot of people don't recognize it when they see it. They think it's just a weed growing, but you can also cook with this as well. It's a great substitute for onion and garlic. You can also cut up the green sections that you see here and put it on top of a baked potato, which I love baked potatoes. I don't know about y'all, but this is great on top of that. So um, we're going to move on to the next thing. And I'm going to teach you about some other herbs that actually grow in Louisiana that are actually native. So let's go. All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our hoodoo project, our root work project. In front of you in this planter box, you actually see a bunch of herbs growing. Thanks to Andrew and Jeff, Andrew you know from the videos, and Jeff who he briefly mentioned in some of them, um, they're responsible for what you're seeing right now. Uh, lots of hard work and time has went into these planter boxes that we have in our front yard. Um, peppermint, that one's obvious. If you don't know what peppermint is, uh, you probably need to reevaluate what you know about yourself in the meantime. Um, we have a lot of peppermint actually growing in our planter boxes. We have if I'm not mistaken, we have spearmint, we have a peppermint, and a chocolate mint. Um, peppermint is traditionally used in plantation vodou, as far as the root work is concerned, to bring money. I am going to be teaching you how to make a money gri gri bag to attract money today. Um, traditionally, back during slavery, a lot of slaves needed anything and everything in their power to earn enough money to earn their freedom, if the slave owner allowed them. This is one of the plants that they believe would attract that money or that income needed to buy their own freedom. We also have some garlic grass growing right here, along with some oregano, some rosemary, some Thai basil. Some of these things are indigenous, some of these things are not. You use what you have on hand. Some plantations didn't have certain things, so they just used what they had. This is what I have, thanks to Andrew and Jeff, so this is what we're gonna be using to make our medicine bottle and also our gris gris. Um, long as it's green, if it's green, it's good. So these are all green, so they'll all attract money. Traditionally, most of these, as you know, for the herbalists who are actually watching this, are used for many different reasons, depending on what illness you have. But in Plantation Vodou, we use them as a cure-all. So now we have our cuttings, we have the plants that we need. We're gonna move into the house and we're gonna go ahead and get started with the meat of what we're doing. Let's go. All right, y'all, we're about to go ahead and make our gris gris bag, which translates to gray gray in French and Creole. There's a story behind the history of what gris gris actually is. Each family would probably have their own story as to how it came to be, where it come from. The story that was told in my family is back in West Africa, when people would travel from tribe to tribe, they would always bring gifts. These gifts were always involved with seeds, or plants that were not prevalent in the village that they were actually visiting. So they would carry them around their necks in a fabric pouch. And when they got to the village, they would exchange the gris gris with the elders who were actually there. Um, there's a story where during the African slave trade where they were captured and they had these bags of herbs around their necks. And um, because some of the slave owners only spoke French, they saw these bags of herbs around these slaves necks and asked them like is this white magic or black magic because back then they believe if it's not christian it's devil worshiping and it's not in the bible it's black magic 
And the slave owner couldn't figure out, like, is this white or black magic? So he called it gri, which translates to gray. Gri, gri means gray, gray. That's where we got that from. Now, in traditional plantation vodou, when it comes to root work and magic and healing, we do everything in sets of three. I know y'all have seen me in some of the videos do this. I make this symbol on my forehead like this on the side of my head. Sometimes I do it here. Sometimes I do it there. The number three is very important when it comes to root work in our traditions because it represents the past, it represents the present, and it also represents the future. So the two, hand, the two fingers that you see me put into my head is a representation of that. Me being the present, the top finger representing the future, while the bottom finger represents the past. So to the head, it makes one thing. We do the same thing with the root work. So if you're trying to attract money, and you need it on the fly especially, you still have to represent your past, your present, and your future. So most slaves, if they had it, would use three pennies or three coins that they actually had. The cheapest, lowest value of money that you can actually get. Um, and they would take three pennies, past, present, and future, and those go at the bottom of your Grigory bag. After that, the hard part, which is very easy. Stripping your herbs and putting them inside the bag. Now, traditionally, what my family would do whenever they're doing this is they would sing a slave, a slave hymn or a slave spiritual. I'm not about to sing for y'all. Y'all can hang on to that. And for those of you who know me in person, y'all know I majored in, well, I went to school for vocal talent. But nah, y'all can ask me to do that for y'all in person. So right now I'm adding the oregano. Doesn't really matter what order of things that you actually add your herbs. Just add them. While you're adding your herbs, you're focusing on what you want. So this, we want money. So right now you should be having green, 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 green in your head because what's the color of money in America? Green. Unless you're asking for coins, which I don't know the reason why. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of coins to be toting around when you're trying to pay off a bill. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add the herbs that I want. Some rosemary. Rosemary also brings clarity, which actually helps with thinking about money and you know making right decisions financially oregano is a representation of money itself just look at it it looks like it could be money so we're adding that um the garlic grass i'm adding for protection to make sure that nobody that no negative energy affects what i'm trying to do now this is not the same garlic grass that i showed you that's growing in the backyard. This is uh, a different variety that Andrew and Jeff actually managed to get a hold of. All right, and then the peppermint. Of course, peppermint's gonna smell good, like peppermint smells good, but peppermint also, we believe, keeps negative energy away and it also attracts money at the exact same time. So you're basically putting a bunch of money in a bag with three pennies and praying to your ancestors and God that it works. Um, and I have a surprise for everybody here. This particular grigri that I'm making, it can be yours if you're up for an adventure. I am going to hide this grigri bag somewhere in the city of New Orleans. I'm not going to tell y'all where, but I'm going to hide it. If you get on Instagram and follow my Instagram account, High Priest Roby, on Instagram, I'm going to start dropping clues as to where this particular bag will be hidden and my request is that once whoever finds this bag, please tag me, tag me in your picture. Take a picture of yourself and tag me so I can go ahead and give you a shout out and you, you can keep the bag. So whoever finds this bag, you can keep it. This is a money bag. And again, legit, I'm going to actually take a rubber band and I'm going to use the rubber band to actually tighten it so it doesn't open. Um, we're supposed to use twine, which you can find on hay bales and stuff like that. But I'm not backing by you, Sarah, right now. So I'm working with, like my ancestors did, you work with what you have. Um, it's in a green fabric for the obvious reason, money. So get on Instagram, follow me on High Priest Roby's profile. Look for some hints it's after this video drops. Stay tuned. Next thing we're going to work on is the medicine bottle. All right, y'all. <laughs> Um, the dishwasher running. We're in my kitchen. So <laughs> y'all can't see him, but Andrew is actually all string right now getting ready for dinner with us. Uh, go ahead and say, hey, since James won't turn the camera over there. <laughs> and Jeff and Jeff is uh, on his side. I don't know what he's doing right now. He's probably relaxing. The boy works really hard. So the next thing you need to uh, uh, 
we need to talk about is actually how to make your own medicine bottle. Now, a lot of y'all don't have access to the one thing that you probably don't know how to make, moonshine. Now, in certain states, that is illegal, so I'm not telling you to go illegally make your own liquor. I'm telling you, go to go down to the store, to the corner, to the corner store where uh, Mr. Rahi work. I'm talking about somebody for real. I'm not making that name up. And then go ahead and get you some Everclear or some diesel, and you can use that as a substitute. But you have to have that 100% grain alcohol. Because whenever you put all those herbs and everything in here that you're going to be using, you need an alcohol in order to, you know, maintain them and preserve them for a while. Um, my, I actually have access to a medicine bottle that has not been emptied 100% with the same herbs in it since I was around seven to eight years old. Um, it, it, that stuff lasts forever. You just keep adding your liquor in there and you're not going to have a problem. Now, as the good thing about the herbs that we pick is that you never let anything go to waste. So see, I've stripped this completely down to just the stem. That's what went inside the grigri bag. That doesn't mean that this is bad. You're going to add this to your medicine bottle so that you can um, use everything on the plant. Now, I have in the medicine bottle already some lavender stems. Jeff's mother actually gave us a lavender plant, and I ended up harvesting it um, at one point, and the stems are now in here. Lavender is really good. Um, also some things that won't go into our medicine bottle that, uh, you can actually add is citrus. So when you peel your orange, the peel itself is actually healthy for you. You can add that to your medicine bottle. Um, your green onions, you know how some people like to take the green onions and cut the bottom off and then use the rest. Take though, take that root, throw it inside your medicine bottle. By the way, stop throwing away y'all ends. Y'all know y'all can put that in some dirt and regrow y'all vegetables, right? There's so many YouTube tutorials out there that you can actually learn how to do this with. And I'm just going to tell y'all, I'm not going to show y'all. We're sticking to the root work, the hoodoo. So I'm going ahead and adding the lemon basil. Um, if you have some left over as far as the leaves and whatnot, add it all. Add everything up in there. Everything that's edible, add it to your medicine bottle. Again, citrus, the peel of the citrus. Um, honey is a big one. That's a natural cough suppressant that a lot of people don't know about. And honey will last you for centuries, ask the Egyptians. Rosemary, of course, is also good. Um, and eventually, you know, once you are done, I use a small bottle. You have something that looks like this. This is my medicine bottle. So you can even see the citrus and you can see the the bottom of the, the onion and the rosemary that's in there. And also some nasturtium that Andrew has graciously grown for us that I've collected and put in the bottle as well. This is Everclear. This is legally bought. I am over the age of 21 before anybody say anything. I know I don't look it, but you know, my partner loves this. So once you're done with your medicine bottle, like once it's filled up with the liquor that you need, let this sit for about one month. If you can, and if you can afford it, fill a big bottle like this almost to the top. Don't overfill it. Don't leave a little space right there so that, you know, when you open it, just in case, don't nothing go. That's happened in this kitchen before, just so y'all know. Um, after one month, it's ready to use. Whenever you feel there's a cold happening or if you feel like oh, you're coming down with something, get you a shot glass, take you a shot, and call it a day. If you start to feel worse, go to the hospital. Please go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. I'm not teaching you how to do a cure-all 100%. I'm teaching you preventive ways of getting sick. And if you continue to get sick, go to the doctor, please. But there's your plantation voodoo medicine bottle. And don't actually put it in the oven. <laughs> Y'all see how James just ruined my comedic effect? When you drink this stuff. I mean, just imagine, uh, what, Everclear flavored with garlic? Mm -hmm. It's one of a kind. It's a truly one of a kind experience, and the germs will realize that they're unwelcome and they'll get the hell out. Andrew's brother-in-law, um, one day, <laughs> was filling down, and he came over to the house. Uh, he was just visiting. This was uh, before uh, all the situations that we're in was happening now. And I gave him a shot of this. Of course, it made him loopy, but it did fight off whatever he was dealing with the next day. He said he felt 100% better. Like he felt like he had just woken up from a long sleep. He did, because the Everclear is 100% alcohol for the most part, but it did help. So I do have some testimonials as far as like, does this actually work or not? I've helped a lot of people with this. 
um, especially a lot of my friends who were, you know, I'm just going to say it. A lot of my friends who were homeless, you know, as a voodoo priest, they know they can come to me and I can help them out with whatever I need to help them out with. And this was one of the things that I actually used to give to them whenever they, they would get sick. And it does work. So you have it right there. Ta -da! Jazz hands. So, as y'all can see, I've ended my day. Uh, <laughs> I'm now playing video games. And thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thank y'all so much for listening. Thank y'all so much for all the positive feedback. We actually do read some of those comments. And we appreciate all the love and all the support. And especially the kind words that you guys have given us. Um, my tip information is going to be at the bottom, down there in the comments, as usual. Um, as y'all know, we just experienced a hurricane. We're fine. We are some of the lucky ones. Thank God we didn't have any house damage. And as you can see, we also have electricity again. So I just want to thank all of those workers out there working on those power lines out there in that heat and also in the rain. Thank y'all. You guys are heroes. We love you in New Orleans. Um, also in the surrounding parishes that are also majorly affected more so than us. Thank y'all so much for going out there and helping them as well because they probably needed the help before we did. But thank y'all. I just want to say thank y'all so much. Continue to comment, continue to share, continue to support. Do that little bell thing. They tell us to tell y'all to ring the bell and stuff. Do all those things, the subscription and the bell and all those things and whatnot. And remember, I'm going to be posting the hints for the Grigri bag on my Instagram page, High Priest Roby, all together. And I look forward to doing this again. If y'all want me to do more videos like this with Free Tours by Foot, you got to let them know. So continue to communicate. And thank y'all again. I really enjoyed y'all. Ashe, take care. I love my island. Oh, this girl got another visitor in her house, Julian. Me and him share the same birthday. They say me and him is the same person because look at him. He blue. He's a unicorn. That's, that's Roby.